In year 2002, a therapy called Provenge was first shown to extend the lives of advanced prostate cancer patients. It took the FDA until 2010 to approve Provenge. Life Extension battled the FDA to persuade the agency to allow prostate cancer patients to gain access to this therapy much earlier. The FDA refused to allow patients to access Provenge for eight years. Life Extension calculated that 82,000 human life years were lost by the FDA's eight-year delay in approving this one drug called Provenge. This is really shocking. So many people and so many years of life needlessly lost. How frequently does this occur? In year 1983, Life Extension recommended to its members that a drug called ribavirin could effectively treat serious viral infections such as hepatitis C and viral pneumonia. Ribavirin has been used throughout the world as a broad spectrum antiviral medication, but the FDA refused to approve it until the late 1990s. Life Extension calculated that hundreds of thousands of Americans perished needlessly because the FDA suppressed ribavirin so long. Please give us an example of a drug the FDA knowingly allowed to be sold, even though it knew the data supporting it was fraudulent. Ketek is a drug the FDA approved to treat pneumonia, but it causes serious liver damage. In some cases, liver failure develops necessitating a liver transplant. Some patients die before a donor liver can be found. The risks of liver failure were known before FDA approved KTEC, but FDA approved it anyway. As the body count piled up, a Senate investigative panel was convened to find out why the FDA continued to allow KTEC to be sold. In sworn testimony before the United States Senate, the FDA employees intentionally presented fraudulent safety data to justify their approval of KTEC. How fraudulent were these data? While the FDA was presenting the fake data to the United States Senate, a criminal investigation was simultaneously being conducted that found that the clinic where the safety study allegedly occurred was closed during the time the study supposedly took place. It was also determined that documents relating to the safety study had date modifications and signature inconsistencies. Shortly after the fake safety data was presented by the FDA employees, the person who contrived this charade pled guilty and was sentenced to almost five years in jail. So here you have FDA employees swearing under oath before the United States Senate that this drug was safe, and the person who conducted the so-called safety study, which never occurred, they were pleading guilty to a crime and were going to jail. I have to ask you if the FDA ever admitted this was a fraudulent study. What's even more shocking is that the FDA continued to cite this safety study long after the principal investigator admitted it was fraudulent. While the perpetrator of this safety study sat in prison for falsifying the data, the FDA used the very same study to issue a public health announcement stating that the risks of Ketek were no greater than other antibiotics, which was a blatant lie. Doesn't the FDA exert more control over clinical trials as a basis for its decision to approve new drugs? No, it relies on drug company-sponsored clinical trials that have been known to be falsified and covered up in order to win FDA approval. The FDA drug approval process is a charade perpetrated against the health and pocketbooks of the American public. How much are Americans overpaying for their prescription drugs? Americans pay about nine times more on average for their generic drugs than what the cost would be in the free market environment I propose in pharmacracy. As you can see, back in 2009, prescription drugs could have been obtained for about 80% less were it not for burdensome FDA overregulation of these generic drugs. The chart on page 141 of Pharmacracy, which we're showing on the screen now, reveals just how much Americans are overpaying for their medications. How much are drug prices increasing? Prices for patented prescription drugs increase throughout the year, and these increases exceed the rate of inflation. In some cases, price gouging occurs to the extent that Americans can't even afford their medications. For instance, between years 2005 and 2007, the cost of the antidepressant Welbutin went up by 44.5%. The cost of the attention deficit drug Adderall went up by 33.5%. And the price of the sleep aid Ambien, that shot up 70%. In my book, Pharmacracy, we reveal what the public is not aware of when it comes to the outlandish prescription drug price increases that our nation is saddled with only because of FDA overregulation. It's nothing less than outrageous. Are drug prices still increasing this much? 
Here's a chart from Pharmacracy showing the price increases that occurred recently on a wide range of drugs. Just imagine you need a cancer drug and you, Medicare or your insurance company, had to fork over almost $5,000 for only 28 pills. Or let's say you wanted to use a drug like Cialis and your cost for 30 pills was over $500. In my book, Pharmacracy, I outline how a free market would result in healthcare costs across the board plummeting, which would spare Medicare from impending insolvency. Bill, an important question I must ask you is, what simple step can the public take to reduce their need for costly healthcare? The simplest way to reduce the demand for costly medical procedures and prescription drugs is for virtually everyone to take at least 5,000 international units of vitamin D each day. Hundreds of published scientific studies document that the incidence of virtually every degenerative disease could be slashed if people take higher doses of vitamin D. The Life Extension Foundation conducted a study of over 13,000 dedicated supplement users and we found that 85% had less than optimal vitamin D levels in their blood. These supplement users were already taking around 1,000 IUs each day of vitamin D, but they needed to increase it to 5,000 IUs and higher to achieve optimal blood levels of 25-hydroxy vitamin D. How do government-protected drug price increases compare with free market dietary supplements? Well, as I showed you earlier, Richard, patented prescription drug prices surge higher every year, and even generic drugs are horrifically overpriced compared to what they would cost in the free market. Dietary supplement prices, on the other hand, which are controlled by the free market and not the federal government, have plummeted in price. For instance, the Life Extension Foundation was the first to introduce coenzyme Q10 to the United States back in 1983. Its price has plummeted by over 75% since then. And the price actually keeps going down lower because more effective ways to enhance coenzyme Q10 absorption have been discovered. Now, if dietary supplements were regulated the way prescription drugs are, consumers would be paying over $330 for a one-month supply of CoQ10. It's remarkable and shocking that prices have come down for dietary supplements, yet they've surged it's so high for prescription drugs. Can you give us another example, please? A nutrient that Life Extension introduced in 1996 called s adenosyl methionine, also known as SAMI, now costs 77% less than it did originally. SAMI is sold as an expensive prescription drug in Europe, but in the free market environment for dietary supplements that currently exist in the United States, the price is substantially less. These same price reductions would occur for prescription drugs and other medical services if we tear down the existing regulatory barriers. I document all of this in my book, Pharmacracy. What happens when the Food and Drug Administration approves a dietary supplement as a prescription drug? The FDA approved a fish oil prescription drug back in 2006. It cost over $200 for a one-month supply. The exact same potency of fish oil could be obtained in a dietary supplement for under $30 a month. The price of prescription drug fish oil is now around $175 a month, which is still six times higher than what free market fish oil supplements can be obtained for. FDA would like to convert many dietary supplements into prescription drugs, but the Life Extension Foundation has been leading the charge to protect consumers from the extortionist price gouging that will occur if the FDA succeeds in taking away our free access to dietary supplements. You mentioned frequently in your book, Pharmacocy, you talk about the deadly impact of FDA censorship. How is this, this censorship killing Americans? The FDA is attacking makers of healthy foods like walnuts, cherries, and green tea. The FDA insists that they not inform the public about the health benefits these foods confer. FDA intimidation has caused makers of foods that help prevent disease to remove these scientific statements from their websites. FDA has no problem, by the way, with makers of potato chips and other fried carbohydrate foods with promoting their junk foods as being heart healthy. What about FDA censorship of prescription medications? When it comes to prescription drugs, the FDA does not allow companies to inform consumers about life-saving off-label benefits. For example, 
there is an extensive body of evidence that the anti-diabetic drug metformin may help prevent and not just treat type 2 diabetes. Metformin, in fact, may also prevent and help treat certain cancers. Based on Life Extension Foundation's analysis of the published scientific literature, virtually every cancer patient should be taking metformin as it functions via multiple mechanisms to inhibit tumor cell propagation. Metformin, by the way, was approved and used in Europe decades before the FDA allowed Americans to have it. Millions of diabetics died prematurely as a result of the FDA's delay in approving metformin. When metformin was first approved in the U.S., the FDA granted its manufacturer an exclusive status that caused the price to be many times higher than what the Europeans were paying for the identical medication. Bill, you've written several books. What motivated you to write this book, Pharmocracy? For 31 years, the Life Extension Foundation has sought to accelerate the development of therapies to better treat the diseases of aging and gain control over aging itself. Standing in our way are swarms of government bureaucrats armed with convoluted powers that suffocate medical innovation. We believe if it were not for the dictatorial powers bestowed on the FDA by our Congress, that cures for many of the killer diseases of aging would have been discovered by now. So I wrote this book for the purpose of consolidating what has already been published in the public domain about the lethal dangers of overregulation. Healthcare is now egregiously overpriced. Side effect laden drugs remain on the market while life-saving therapies are delayed or suppressed altogether. Congress must amend the law to tear down the roadblock of overregulation so that free market forces can slash medical prices while developing safer and more effective treatments. I must ask you, why do you believe concerned citizens should purchase this book? The artificial high price of medicine is bankrupting the United States. Medicare and other government programs are technically insolvent. That means that government insurance programs that are supposed to take care of virtually everyone watching this program won't be able to cover their future obligations. Pharmocracy outlines how deregulation will solve this nation's health care cost crisis. Realistically speaking, how will pharmocracy be able to change today's allegedly crooked system? Pharmocracy provides a blueprint as to how the health care cost crisis we currently face can be logically resolved. Citizens will learn why medicine has become unaffordable and how they can participate in restructuring the antiquated way medicine is practiced in the United States today. The benefit will be affordable access to medical care, better ways of preventing illness, and non-toxic cures for killer diseases that confront aging individuals. The price of pharmacracy is only $24. Each person who orders this hardcover book will get a free subscription to Life Extension magazine so that they are kept fully informed about proven methods to stay healthy that are overlooked by conventional doctors. So for only $24, anyone in your audience can participate in our campaign to tear down the bureaucratic barriers that deny us access to safer and more effective medical therapies while simultaneously sparing Medicare and other government health programs from bankruptcy. This has been most interesting and I believe your astonishing book will certainly create waves while inspiring all who read it. Thank you so much, Richard, for giving me the opportunity to enlighten your audience to this critical subject. Thank you. This concludes our special show for today from On Location in South Florida with Bill Falloon. I'm Richard Peretz. Thank you for being with us. This essential book is only $24, and you'll also get a free subscription to Life Extension magazine. You'll always be up to date on all of the proven ways to stay healthy including therapies that conventional doctors simply overlook. Please join us in our campaign to enable better and safer health care, and also help save Medicare and other government health programs from bankruptcy. Get your book today. This essential book is only $24, and you'll also receive a free subscription to Life Extension Magazine. Get your book today.